Number 36, a 75 turn 10 centimeter diameter coil rotates at an angular velocity of 8 radians per second in a 1.25 tesla field, starting with the plane of the coil parallel to the field. Letter A, what is the peak EMF? All right, so this one's fairly straightforward. All right, peak EMF, we're going to use this formula down here on the, on the right-hand side. Um, it says that the peak EMF, in other words, I call it the peak voltage, that's all the same thing, is going to be equal to the number of turns of the coil multiplied by the uh, area of the coil, the area uh, of the loop, right, that is experiencing that external magnetic field multiplied by the strength of the magnetic field multiplied then by the angular velocity of the coil. So we can just kind of plug and chug here, right? 75 turns, they tell us the diameter of the coil, um, and it's a circle, right? A cir uh, circle, it is a circle. And so that means that the radius is gonna be half of this or five centimeters, right? Five centimeters, and we know that uh, we need to take the five centimeter value and then convert it into meters, so that's 0 0 0.05. Right, and then uh, to take this now and turn it into area, we gotta take pi, multiply it by then that radius 0 0.05 and square it, okay? Magnetic field strength is 1.25 Tesla, right? This problem is fairly straightforward at the moment. And then um, the angular velocity, where is that? Uh, that's eight radians per second, so eight. All have the right units, so now we're just going to Plug and chug, so 75 times then pi times then 0 0.05 squared times then 1.25 times eight, so we get about 5.89, right? 5.89, and that is in terms of volts. So that's going to be the peak uh, EMF, peak voltage, whatever you want to call it. All right, so let's move this on over. Oh, so letter B. Um, at what time is the peak EMF uh, first reached? Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Please buckle your seatbelts. There is some turbulence ahead. What we now have to do here to figure out a problem like this is uh, we got to uh, first before before we do it, we cry and then we collect ourselves and we get ourselves back together. And now we're going to try to approach the problem. So, um, you know, think about what it's saying. The plane of the coil is first starting parallel to the field. So in other words, uh, if I had to represent this, I guess I would, uh, you know, we, we could do it. Yeah, I guess we could do it something like this. Pretend that you got some. It doesn't really matter the direction. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll have let's say some magnetic field lines pointing this way and pretend we have now the coil just like this okay you're seeing exactly how it is right so the plane of the coil here the plane of the coil is in the plane of the page right it's in the plane of this magnetic field that has vectors pointing to the right okay in other words the normal for this circle right the normal of the coil here is pointing you know out of the page or you could say it's pointing into the page right the perpendicular component to the plane all right. Um, so what we realize here is that there is no flux uh, that goes through the coil at this particular point. Why is that the case? Well, according to this formula, it says the magnetic field multiplied by the area multiplied by the cosine of the uh, normal, the, right? The cosine of the angle that is created between the normal of the area and the magnetic field, right? So the normal here is pointing in or out of the page, however you want to think about it. That creates a 90 degree angle, all right, with the magnetic field. Cosine of 90 is zero. This whole thing goes to zero. All right. So um, we might be lulled into thinking, OK, so the peak EMF doesn't is not first reach at zero. Well, hold on for a second. Take a look at this formula. This formula says that to find the EMF or in other words, we can say that the peak EMF. I know this doesn't have a little O there, but just bear with me. The peak EMF here is at a function of when this thing, the change in flux divided by the change in time is at its peak. Right. The, that. Can we agree? So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to create a graph. And I want to try to create a graph uh, based off of the flux, all right, and the time. So we just mentioned that at the start, at t is equal to zero, what was the flux? The flux was zero, right? I just, that's what I talked about. The 90 degrees, this whole thing goes to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot a little point down there, okay? Now we know at some point in the future, uh, why don't we calculate it? All right, let's see when it's at its, let's see when it's going to reach a maximum flux. So when is the flux a maximum here according to the formula? Well, the flux is a maximum when the angle between the normal and the uh, magnetic field is going to be zero degrees, right? So in other words, you got to imagine, take this coil now, this red coil, okay, and you got to rotate it, okay? You're going to rotate it 90 degrees and you're going to rotate it just like this. So bear with me here. 
I'm going to rotate it just like this. So now the coil is actually, you know what? Let me leave that picture there. All right. And now I'm going to basically just, this is what it's going to look like in the future. Let me see if I can do it. We're looking at it now on the side. Okay. So we're kind of rotating it on the side. Let me do that. Let me make it a little thinner. Okay. That, that's good enough. Now you would just basically see a line if you were really lining it up, you know, but I'm trying to give you a little perspective here, uh, my limited artistic ability. So now, right, right now, the normal now of this plane uh, of the of the coil is now going, you know, in around, you know, to the left or to the right, however you want to think about it. Okay, I'm just going to leave it to the left. But now, if you notice the plane of the coil, you know, uh, excuse me, the normal of the coil is now parallel with the magnetic field, and therefore that angle is zero, and therefore this reaches the maximum, right? So I know once this coil rotates and the normal creates now a zero degree angle with the magnetic field vector here, um, I now know that it's going to reach a maximum, okay? So if the flux was a minimum to start, it's going to reach some maximum now some point in time in the future. So what did we do here, right? How much of a, so if you think about this, how much of a turn did we make to go from this picture to this picture? How many revolutions did we go through? Didn't we go through about a quarter of a revolution, right? If you want to think about that in terms of revolutions, went through a quarter of a revolution, okay? Now, the question is, how long did it take for this thing to go through a quarter of a revolution? Well, you know the angular velocity, right? The angular velocity is radius per second. Why don't we take convert that into like maybe revolutions per second, okay? I like working with revolutions a little easier to think about, and I think you probably would agree. So radians per second, I'm going to convert that into revolutions, radians on the bottom, revolutions on the top, two pi radians for every one revolution. So just take the eight and divide it by two pi, okay? And you can leave the pi in place if you want, but I'm going to get rid of it. So eight divided by then, I'm going to do two pi, okay? So it's going to be 1.27, all right? Because it's easier to kind of conceptualize this. So 1.27 uh, revolutions are being made every single second. Full revolutions, right? So if there's 1.27 full revolutions every single second, and my question then is, how long does it take to do a quarter of a revolution? So basically, we can think about it dimensionally, right? In order to figure out how long it's going to take now to make a quarter of a revolution, we can think about this using dimensional analysis. If I want to find time, I don't want time in the denominator. I want it in the numerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip that. Meaning for every one second, there are 1.27 revolutions. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by a quarter of a revolution. Now realize what happens. The revolutions cancel. What are we left with? Seconds. This is now the time that it's going to take to make that quarter revolution. So 0.25 divided by that exact answer, 1.27. And we're going to get about 0 0.196. Okay? 0 0.196 seconds. Remember, this is now the time it's going to take to make a quarter of a revolution. Okay, one quarter revolution. All right. So now we uh, we realize that. Uh, so basically, in time now, a point uh, one nine six seconds after the start, right? We are then going to achieve the maximum flux. That's just what we said because it's going to take to go from this picture to a quarter of a revolution. It's going to take uh, 0.196 seconds. And remember, this is when it is at a maximum, the flux through it, because the angle between the normal there and the magnetic field is zero. All right, and that when you do the math there, it comes out to a maximum. So now I know that this point here is going to represent 0.196 seconds. Well, what happens then when this makes now another this thing now makes another revolution. So if you want to pretend that we're rotating it, you know, counterclockwise, it really doesn't make a difference. Um, then it's going to go back to this position. But remember, it's not back to the full, you know, it didn't make a full revolution yet. This would have been, in terms of the beginning, this would have been a half of a revolution, right? It's like, here's, here's heads, and this now is tails, okay? And then you got to do another one, right? And you, I think you get the picture, okay? So when I do now, like, a half of a revolution from the f beginning to the end, right? I'm back to a minimum magnetic flux because again, the normal here is pointing in or out of the page 
from that loop, and now it makes a 90 degree angle with the magnetic field, the sine of 90, excuse me, the cosine of 90 here is zero. So that goes back to a minimum. So now we're gonna go all the way back down to here, okay, on the graph. But what time is that? Well, you might say, well, if it took, you know, 0.196 seconds to do a quarter of a revolution, would it just be double that to make a full, excuse me, to make a, a half? Uh, uh, yeah, it would, right? So just double it. So this works out to be 0.393 about, 393 seconds, okay? And you would literally keep going, okay? Uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll extend it one more. So then, you know, we're going to extend it again, and then we can add now that to it. So that would be about 0 0.589, 0 0.589. So where do you think now that magnetic flux is going to be on the graph? What do you think? You think it's going to be back up to here? Well, it won't be right? Why? Because you have to remember this, that as this angle is changing, the angle, the cosine of an angle is going to become negative, right? It's going to become negative as soon as you pass like 90 degrees, right? So we can assume that it was positive here for the time being. And then as soon as you went now to this other revolution, it becomes now negative. You're essentially going greater than now 90 degrees, right? We're making a half of a revolution. We're going 180, a rev uh, we're making 180 degrees, right? Almost. Uh, if we make a full half revolution. So if you were to plug in, go ahead, try it in your calculator. Go. Cosine. Co do cosine. Make sure it's in degree mode. Cosine of 135. What do you get? Huh. Negative. Right? So what does that mean? That means that the flux now is negative. So the va the value here that you're going to be plugging in is on the bottom. Okay? So you now have to extend this graph downward. And here now is the slope. Okay, well, not the slope, the point. What the heck am I talking about? There's no slope there, that's the point. So now, what do you think will happen if I go out another, uh, another you know, uh, 0.196 seconds? It's going to, and this one we're going to speed up now, it's going to come back, test it out for yourself. It's going to come back to the, to the axis here, okay? Right? So look, is the curve going to look like this? No. It's going to be a nice, smooth, gentle, rolling curve, right? Nice and smooth, happy little curve there. Okay, so now we have enough firepower to answer the question. Now let's get back to this formula. We said that the maximum EMF should occur when this is at a maximum. Now, wait a minute, what is this? Well, I made a graph here of uh, magnetic flux in time. And, uh, well, wait a minute, if this is on the Y, wait, wait, changing magnetic flux over changing time, right? When this is maximum, I realize that then the EMF should be a maximum. Hmm, wait a minute. How is this related to the graph? Wait, wait, this is on the y-axis, so let's change in y. Wait a minute, this is on the x, so wait, change in x. Wait a minute. Wait. Slope? No. Really? Slope? Wait a minute. Are, am I saying that when the slope is a maximum, that then when the slope here is a maximum, I get a maximum EMF? Yes, that is what I'm talking about. Okay, that is what it is. So where's the slope, the maximum here? And you're going to be like, wait a minute, the slope is constantly changing. Well, that's the point. The EMF is constantly changing. But where's the maximum, the point of the maximum? Well, look up here. You're at the top of the hill. What's the slope? Well, it's flat. You're at the top of the hill, right? Right at the top, there is no slope. What about all the way at the bottom? It's flat. There is no slope down there too. So where's the point of maximum slope? Well, take a look at the beginning, right? Put your dot there. Draw your tangent line. Boom. Right? That would kind of be your tangent line to that initial point. That looks like the steepest point it's ever going to be. Imagine you pick a point halfway through here. The slope should be getting less steep. Okay? More negative, less positive. So we can answer that question now. When this is at a maximum, when the slope here of this graph that I made is at a maximum, that correlates with a maximum EMF. So therefore, for letter uh, uh, B, now, what, what time? Well, time equals zero. That's the maximum. Okay, because I'm looking for the maximum slope. And then letter C, it says, at what time is the EMF first and then it's most negative? So now where's the most negative slope going to be? Well, it ain't going to be at the top and it's not at the bottom. This is a negative flux, but that does, I want to find the change in flux for the change in time, right? So the maximum negative point is actually going to be right here, okay? If you had to dot that in red and you drew your line, tangent line to that point, it has to be pointing down, right? There's almost like instantaneous change. It's almost borderline like kind of calc analysis, but you know, that's what's required here. So um, here we realize now that this is going to be the most, most negative slope, okay? Therefore, if this is the most negative slope, then that should be the most negative EMF, right? Hopefully that kind of makes sense. 
So what we're now going to do is we're now going to uh, just say that time. I mean, that's the time right there. Okay. So what, what time is it? Okay. First, and that's most negative. All right. So let's just say it's going to be time is equal to 0 0.393. Okay. All right, cool. Now, you might also look at this negative sign. You might say, well, wait a minute. If this is negative, that's negative. Should that be positive? Well, that's a good point. Um, however, though, it really does depend on how we start this problem on out. All right, I'm being a little general here about where the ve where the normal's pointing and how it's rotating and so on and so forth. So don't just just disregard that negative sign for right now. Okay, just pretend it's like absolute well, not absolute value, but um, just 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 it's just giving direction. I actually hate the the use of that formula from the book, but anyway, um, that would be the answer for letter C. And then letter D, it says, uh, what is the period of the AC voltage output? Ladies and gentlemen, you may unbuckle your seatbelts and move freely about the cabin. The turbulence is over. So here we have now a letter D. So letter D, and I did this in the last problem. I derived this formula in the last problem, so check out number 35. So the period is going to be equal to 2 pi over omega. So all we got to do now is this is going to be 2 pi over our angular velocity. They told it to us was 8 radians per second. So literally just throw this on into the calculator now. 2 pi divided by 8, and that's going to work out to be 0.785. 0.785, and that's going to be in terms of now seconds. All right, that is now the period. Oh, my goodness. All right, guys, if you stuck with me on that one, kudos to you. Great job. And uh, check out more of our videos. We got math, chem. If you're taking math and chem simultaneously, check them out. All right, uh, even if you're not using OpenStax books, it follows the OpenStax book. Go to the website, download the book, find similar problems to the ones you might be having. We got solved solutions for you. All right, and uh, yeah, look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.